As you can see, all smiles there are looking at the Kenyan men and women as they did Kenya proud. That was Asbel Kiprop, the last one there, clinching the gold in 1,500 meters. There was also David Rudisha. And you can just hear the commentator. It was so amazing. They get you to feel the significance of such beautiful moments. So 800 meters as well, who was able to win. Vivian Chariot, 10,000 meters gold. Ezekiel Kemboy, 3,000 meters. Tipple Chase and uh, Haven Jep Kemboy as well in that uh, same race for the women. Uh, Nicholas Bett, who won the 400 meters gold. And Julia Siego, the first Kenyan field event athlete to win a medal. So that's amazing. Seven gold, uh, six silver, three bronze, 16 medals in total. They're back home today, placing Kenya on top of the world. The first time ever Kenya uh, has been tops uh, in terms of the athletics. We've done fairly well in the past, but this time around, we are number one on top of the globe and getting the world to shine that spotlight on us. And so as the athletes come back, of course, we all continue to celebrate them for the great work that they did representing the country and getting Kenya's flag to fly high and hearing that national anthem. What an epic moment for the country. It always helps to forget all about our worries and all of our stresses and stories in the country and just focus on such beautiful moments. So here at KTN, we definitely continue to celebrate our athletes. Now, I want to shift gears, uh, focus on Manta's dental health. Many of you have been writing in and saying on our health segment that's one of the issues you'd like to hear discussed about, more light shed on some of the questions you'd have, which I have been able to uh, put together some of those. And if you have a question, uh, we'll have our phone lines on the screen for you so that you can call in. I have my two guests in studio with me this morning. Dr. Wanjiro Mukiri is a dentist. And also with us is Dr. Lena Sindegwa, who is also a dentist. Gentlemen, lady, thank you for joining us. Good morning to you. Mm. Isn't that amazing watching those videos? Yeah. You were able to... Yeah, <laughs> were you following the yeah, athletics? Yeah, okay. yeah? yeah, Of course. It was a Kenyan moment. Kenyan moment. Yeah. It is beautiful. I mean, they, they do such amazing stuff for Kenya. And you know, when you're having so sugar stories, corruption, it's <laughs> good to take a breather. It's a good break. Yeah? But now I want to talk... Um, teeth <laughs> and dental health. I'll start with you, Dr. Ndegwa. We're talking about oral health. What is it we, we mean? Well, oral health is basically uh, about the teeth, the gums, uh, and any other structure that's basically around the teeth and the gums, meaning the muscles, the soft tissue, the cheeks, you know. Uh, some some uh, of the body parts are also connected to the mouth, like the nose, and also the neck muscles. So basically, oral health, we don't focus so much on the teeth alone but generally w any structures that are around the mouth. Okay. Yeah. And why is it important that we have even these kind of discussions, Dr. Mokiri? It's important because um, currently we are experiencing a lot of problems, mm -hmm. dental problems in our society, and um, especially in the rural areas, we are exp um, experiencing a lot of issues. Mm -hmm. So it's good to talk about it. It's good to empower our society and um, do, to let them know how they can maintain yeah. good oral hygiene. And we'll, sp we'll, we'll get to the issues because it is important that we break that down. But let's begin with the basics and not everyone, when they think or hear dental health, their mind quickly shifts to, okay, um, the basics. What are the basics? Brush your teeth how many times a day? Wow. Uh, Is that a basic? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe yeah, I it's up definitely. <laughs> brushing and diet are two of the basic things that you need to watch out about oral health. We were taught in primary school that you need to brush three times a day. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's not so practical, yeah. basically. <laughs> <laughs> but there's a reason why they say that, because um, you, any time you take a meal, it was assumed that you do breakfast, lunch, and supper. Mm. So that is the standard way of, of eating. You shouldn't snack in between. Basically so that your body, your mouth can recover from the first meal. So when you take breakfast, you need a, a, a time period where the body, the mouth will recover mm -hmm. and then you eat lunch and then after that. So the brushing was meant to be helped the mouth to recover in that aspect. Mm -hmm. But sometimes, most of the times, we don't carry toothbrushes to work or to school. Mm -hmm. So we Should advise, we? Uh, if you can, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> Tell all employers to. Yeah, well, that, that could be something that we <laughs> ask HR to accommodate. Mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah, the, the, the main one is uh, morning and evening, but people should be very vigilant about the evening one. I know that's the most mm -hmm. difficult part. Mm -hmm. I mean, even I myself find it really difficult to brush my teeth in the Why evening. that one? Because, I mean, once you uh, eat, then you start watching KTN, the next thing, uh, news time, and, and then people, by the time you go to bed, you, you get really sleepy and you're not able to 
uh, brush your teeth. So I normally advise as soon as we eat. And eating for some people is eating dinner for some people is 5:30, for some other people is 10 o'clock. So you could, whenever you finish eating, okay. just brush immediately. All then right. after that, uh, everything will be okay. I understand. I have a little bit of an issue with your microphones. We're going to take a short, quick break. Stay with us right here on KTN News. We'll be back after this short break. So we, we, we have no, 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 you are wrong, you are wrong. We're, we're running out of time and I really need to conclude and our conversation. Excuse, excuse. It was addressed to But I read, don't of course, claim. but I read. So why, don't claim. Claim. why are we debating? Why then are you... Don't come to a function that I have organized and heckled me. Heckling is a fundamental right, you know, given by the state. Please, please, let me, let me. No, no, it's not your time, it's KTN time. We are in national television as being watched by everybody else. Kenya as a country is not looking east or west. India is the home of micro, small and medium enterprises. It is refreshing. Informative. The tourism is one of the biggest points in Kenya. Current and about you. That does it to go move away to Ukapa. From Africa in the United Kingdom. If this was the mood in Hargeza. It goes beyond the world. Right here from Kigali, Rwanda, my name is Eugene. Here in Dar es Salaam, it is Josh Morunga. Ah, Jamada is easy. A tale of two cities. It's going to be very exciting. A peaceful and colorful ceremony. A triumph for Nigeria. From Abuja, it's about you and with you. Santa Sala. Thank you for staying with KTN News. In case you're joining us, we are on your health segment this morning. We're focusing on dental or, if you like, oral health. And with me in studio is Dr. Wanjiro Mukiri as well as Dr. Lina Sindegwe, who are both dentists. And before we went on break, Dr. Sindegwe was talking to us about um, why it is important to especially brush teeth in the evening. And you were saying? So, yeah, I was, I was mentioning that um, in the evening it's a challenge for most people to brush their teeth because they get tired towards the evening. Mm -hmm. But also the bacteria that cause gum disease or dental decay, uh, tooth decay, are normally active at night because mm. when you're asleep, that's when they get more active. During when the they day, wake up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> During the day, you're talking, you're eating, I mean, you're working. So the saliva gets a chance to stabilize the mouth. But at night, it's, I mean, yeah. everything shuts down, just like your body system. So that's when they are most active, and that's when most people get dental diseases. All right. What about the uh, kind of toothbrush? Is that important? Because you go to the supermarket, you see all these types, fancy ones, some that vibrate with the leg. So yes. what should we be considering? Yes, yes. Actually, it's very important. And um, it's kind of nice brushes are usually expensive. I usually tell uh, my patients, mm -hmm. go to invest on a good brush and mostly they, you, you find they are a bit expensive mm -hmm. and um, the type of toothbrush should be uh, small headed with a small head and a uh, bit pointed so that it can be able to reach the back of your teeth and uh, we also advise that you change your toothbrush regularly you know but that would be after how long after we should say after every three months but you don't have to wait for the three months if you see the bristles okay. are flared you you actually need to change your brush. Mm. Also, with the type of toothbrush, we have different types. We have toothbrush for kids, and actually when you go to the shelves, you will, you will see they are labeled maybe zero to three years, or no, not sorry, not three, zero to three, <laughs> that, that's a small baby. <laughs> maybe three. Uh, have the yes, yeah. yes, 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 no. maybe f up to five years. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's also some for maybe eight to 10 years, and also for the adults. And um, also, um, about the toothbrush, there are also different types. Mm -hmm. You'll find that there are some which are soft, there are some which are medium, and there are some which are hard. Mm -hmm. yeah? um, it's advisable to buy the soft or the medium because when you use a hard brush, you tend to wear away the enamel of the tooth, and mm -hmm. um, you also tend to wear away the, to cause gum recession which eventually will lead to sensitivity. 
So it's really advisable, like uh, people who smoke, you'll find that most of the time they will come and tell you, Dr. I've been using a hard brush so that it, it can remove the, <laughs> the stains and mm. all that. Little do, do they know that they're actually causing damage. Okay, to so medium teeth. to yeah, medium soft. To soft. What about flossing and um, mouthwash? Are those recommendable, good practices? Flossing, definitely. Mm -hmm. Flossing helps to remove uh, any deposits that are in between the teeth. Some uh, of the toothbrushes, actually not many, are able to go in between the teeth. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not a function of toothbrushes. It's not mm -hmm. possible. So when you use the floss, you ensure any uh, deposits that are in between are taken care of. It is also important to note that uh, there are dental cavities that appear in between the teeth. So when you floss, you enable that not to happen because that is the one that usually is usually hidden mm -hmm. and you're not able to you know find out before unless you go for a dental checkup and you know you don't get sensitivity or pain or anything and then the tooth cracks and then eventually you just uh, eventually now start feeling pain and go to your dentist so that's the reason why you need to floss mouthwashes have their role especially where there's uh, gum disease uh, you know you should after you have your cleaning done make sure you go to your dentist uh, and, and get an antimicrobial mouthwash an antibiotic mouthwash prescribed for you that usually we use for 14 days. It shouldn't be a continuous process because, you know, there are also good bacteria in your mouth. There has to be a balance. Mm -hmm. There's bad don't bacteria. Kill them all. <laughs> yeah, don't kill them all. And mouthwash tends to kill them all. So use it for a period of two weeks, give it a break, and yeah. then give it uh, maybe after two or three months, then you can use your mouthwash again. But okay. it doesn't remove the action of brushing. Brushing comes you first. You still need to and brush. Yes, floss and mm. mouthwash. So many people will visit the dentist only when there's a problem, toothache, when there's some discomfort in the mouth. But how often should you visit a dentist? Actually, it's uh, it's advisable that you visit the dentist at least twice or once per year. Um, that will help with uh, when you go to the visit a dentist. He or she will be able to do a thorough checkup. Uh, identify the different um, the issues that you may have. It might be uh, tooth decay, it might be gum disease. So it's advisable because sometimes you know dental issues like cavities they, they start small, they start small, and before you realize, you already have a big hole, a big decay, mm. and that that will cause of course it causes you discomfort, it will cause you pain eventually, but if at all it was captured early. It will just ne maybe need a filling and you won't have to go to the extent of uh, having a root canal or maybe have an extraction. And, for ex and also maybe like gum disease. You see, it starts with gingivitis where you find there are bleeding gums and uh, bad breath and all that. Mm -hmm. And if you regularly visit uh, your dentist or your uh, oral health care provider, he, he or she will be able to identify and, and capture the disease at the early stages so you won't have, it won't have to go to the extent of you losing your teeth. Okay. Yeah. So which are the most common uh, dental uh, diseases that you come across? Mostly we have uh, gum disease which we call in an advanced stage it's periodontitis. Basically this means, especially when there's attachment loss, meaning the tooth does not have any support mm -hmm. because the gums are the main support for your teeth. So you start experiencing things like bleeding gums, uh, mobile teeth, at times it even mobile is, teeth. Mm -hmm. they are actually shaking. Some patients come in and say my teeth have, I, they used to be really stable but now I'm feeling like some of them are moving. Okay. So that's because the basic support that is there uh, is, is missing because of gum disease. Mm -hmm. The second one is uh, basically dental uh, caries, what we call, uh, what people call cavities. Uh, those form basically because of diet and also how frequ uh, the frequency of brushing. The more you remove the deposits in your mouth, the less chances that you have of getting uh, cavities. So, so sweet tooth type of people will have lots of cavities because then I imagine some of the teeth are sticky and yes, yeah. things like toffees. Toffees, uh, yeah. I used to like toffees. <laughs> <laughs> what uh, we Chocolate. call crisps as well, things that yeah. stick onto your mouth. If you're not able to remove them, then those stick onto your teeth and then you get uh, uh, cavities. Uh, we do have a procedure called something called fissure sealants. It basically uh, blocks out, uh, levels those grooves on your teeth. The grooves are obviously there for a purpose, but uh, it's easier to clean them when they are smoother. So mm. we protect those kind of grooves so that foods don't stick onto your teeth and you're able to brush better. Okay. One other common uh, dental uh, issue that is facing our, our country and our region is also fluorosis, something we call dental fluorosis. 
people with what uh, you call brown teeth. Uh, and it happens a lot where there is uh, a lot of fluoride in the water that you're drinking, which leads to now that condition that we call fluorosis. But what's wrong with teeth being brown? Uh, it's an image thing, actually. Okay, so I mean, that's what I need to find out, is whether it's really like something else or it's just image like but being uncomfortable. But when it's severe, it's, it's, you know, fluorosis has different stages. There's mm -hmm. mild, moderate, and severe. Usually the very brown uh, staining of the teeth, which is internal, is actually at a severe level. And that means the tooth has actually broken down and collected a lot of stains and now turned into uh, the brownness. But despite it being an image issue, yeah. remember the tooth has broken down, which means it's weak. So if you don't save the tooth at that point, regardless of the fact that it's an image issue to mm -hmm. you, it will eventually uh, break down and you'll have to have the tooth extracted. And that leads to tooth loss. And tooth loss has its own consequences. Yeah. So fluorosis is actually a serious problem that is affecting most of our population today. Okay, so yeah. browning of the teeth is fluorosis, cavities, gums, issues. What else? Um, or are those the key ones? Yeah, those are the key ones. Okay. But sometimes you can see the patients who get like oral cancer. We have patients with the oral cysts and all that. But the main ones, as the doctor has mentioned, it's uh, gum disease, mm -hmm. fluorosis, and dental decay. So you were talking also about at the grassroots levels in the villages that more and more people have these yeah. issues. Is it the same thing they're experiencing? Yeah, it's, it's actually very, very common. And if, if you walk around in the, in the village, yeah. you'll find people don't have teeth. At around the age of 45, 50, people don't have their teeth. You're not supposed to lose your teeth. You're supposed actually to age gracefully with your teeth. Yeah, and uh, that, 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 that mostly is contributed to the fact that in the rural areas, mm -hmm. people really don't know about oral hygiene, yeah? Mm -hmm. And uh, they, they don't, it's not, they, they, it's not that, uh, they're, they're, they've not been empowered. They, they need good education to know that this, if you do this, if you maintain a good oral hygiene, you will end up preventing a lot of dental issues, mm. yeah. So in terms of the cavities, what then do you advise people at home? Um, not to have these sweeties or to brush after <laughs> to eat on one side and the other have a toothbrush at hand. <laughs> uh, remember, I, I don't know whether we, that section was caught up, but uh, we, we talked about uh, how you need to eat breakfast, lunch and supper yeah, yeah. and do not snack in between. That is really critical because again, like I said, the mouth needs some time to recover. So if you're a sweet tooth person, you can eat take some sweets maybe during that period, either during breakfast or lunch or supper, because I mean very well know after that you will brush your teeth. Mm. It's the snacking in between. But the nutritionist advise us to ch keep our weight in check to snack in between. That when you have these blocks of this meal, this meal, you know, your weight could be all over the place because then you're eating so heavy at one particular point. So what sometimes would be advised is, you know what, um, mm. have those snacks in between. But Dr. is saying the snacks are not too good. Well, we <laughs> if, if it's an issue of snacks, I would, I would, uh, I would advise mm -hmm. that uh, maybe you take a healthy snack, maybe a carrot okay. or a banana or watermelon, something that is not too sugary and will cause a dis disharmony in the mouth in terms of balance. Mm. Uh, because the acid that is produced by the deposits around your teeth eventually now cause decay. So the saliva stabilizes that acid. and. Some, some foods are not too acidic in terms of uh, their, their components, the, the, what we were discussing about mm. fruits and vegetables. Mm -hmm. those, those ones you can snack in between. Try sugar-free gum as well, that also helps. Or uh, you can uh, take a glass of water as well, that, that, that is not, that, that's not a bad idea. Yeah. But it's, it's the carbohydrates and the sweets that are the problem. When it comes to cavities? Yes, when it comes what to about cavities. gums? What is it we need to be careful looking out for doing or not doing? Okay, first of all, you have to understand the cause of gum disease. Mm -hmm. Gum disease is mostly, mostly mo it's because of uh, accumulation of plaque. Plaque, it's a white yellowish film, which everybody gets, actually, and that is why we brush our teeth. That's why we brush our teeth every day to remove the plaque. Mm -hmm. If you don't brush your teeth, the saliva in the mouth, yeah, it calcifies that plaque and forms uh, a substance called tartar. And, uh, it's, it's usually a greenish, yellowish, and it's hard. It's usually hard on the tooth surface. So ideally, to prevent that, you have to go to the basics. You have to maintain a good oral hygiene. Uh, it's just like saying that when for you to, to have a clean room, mm. you have to clean the room. Yeah? So 
it's the same thing, it's the same basic thing. For you to prevent gum disease, for you to prevent the accumulation of plaque, for you to prevent accumulation of tartar, it's good to start with good oral hygiene. Mm. Have your regular checkups because if when you have the tartar deposits, you cannot be able to remove them. At, to remove that at home with your toothbrush. So mm. that's why the point of a regular visits to the dentist come in and you have to go to the dentist and have your teeth cleaned or, some, or what we call scaling and have your teeth polished. All right. I just want to ask you watching this morning all about oral, oral, oral hey, geez, <laughs> health. Um, if you have any questions, please uh, feel free to call and we'll have those numbers. Uh, on your screen up just now. You can also tweet me directly at Sophia Wanuna. I'll be looking at any of your questions and putting them to our doctors uh, this morning. So any question you have, I'm asking most of those we've been able to compile over the past couple of weeks, uh, but also feel free to uh, call in and we'd love to hear from you this morning. Bad breath. <laughs> People with bad breath, <laughs> it just makes you want to run. Is it a problem sometimes or is it just people who are not brushing their teeth? Oh yeah, bad breath is a huge problem. Mm -hmm. I mean, you get patients coming to us specifically for that reason. But uh, like I always tell my patients, 75% of the time, it's because of uh, poor oral health. Basically not being able to manage uh, brushing your teeth. So uh, once that is usually uh, treated in terms of cleaning, uh, like we talked about, the uh, mouthwash, the flossing, and very important to brush your tongue as well because most of the deposits from uh, the tongue also cause bad breath. Brush what the tongue? Yes. Okay. That is a really important step that uh, is, uh, most people forget that mm -hmm. you need to brush the tongue. There are specific tongue scrapers in the market but uh, if, if you can't find them even the ordinary toothbrush like uh, that Terry went through can yes. also use, you can also use that for uh, brushing your teeth. There are some systemic conditions in uh, uh, medical conditions that can cause bad breath, mm -hmm. uh, which include uh, uh, diabetes. Sometimes uh, there's, there's a, when it's a, at a severe level, you get that uh, bad breath issue. Mm -hmm. uh, some, some medications that people take uh, daily uh, can also cause bad breath. Uh, it's also in, uh, related to the diet. The, it, it is actually true that garlic causes bad breath. And mm -hmm. uh, uh, yeah. sometimes uh, that can also lead to, to uh, yeah, bad breath. But Again, it's important to point out that 5% of the time, it's actually psychological. We would go into the clinic and look for all reasons as to why uh, somebody has bad breath, and we actually can't find it. No medication, no history of any uh, ENT problem. The oral health is good, but the guy just walks with his mouth covered all the time because he thinks that uh, uh, there is a bad breath issue. So we, we, we work hand in hand. Again, this is also uh, a team effort. We collaborate with our medical counterparts in such a case. Mm. But like I said, it's, it's very few, like 5% of the time. 75% of the time, uh, poor oral health. Okay. Yeah. What about braces for people? Uh, we see a lot of young people, kids, is when they'll have their teeth rectified. Can that still happen later on in life? And is it something that you mostly would revert to as a first course of action? Yeah, braces are very important. Um, we all have want good, good aesthetics, yeah? We all want to look good and that is where braces come in. Mm. And um, we do braces when we have cases of crowding and uh, the teeth are not well aligned. Um, it's advisable to have braces at around the age of uh, 12 to 13 years for children when uh, they have all their permanent dentition. Yeah? Because when you look at the health uh, point of view, uh, when you have crowding, it causes other problems like gum disease, dental cavities, because you are, the, the, the patient is not able to brush well, is not able to maintain a good oral hygiene. So it's advisable, not only for aesthetics, but also for good health. Mm -hmm. yeah? And also it's not only for kids actually, even adults. They can still yes. rectify and move yes, at the yes, advantage. Yes, 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 you can do that. You can actually do that. Mm. Yeah. So when many people come to you, uh, Dr. Tari, um, and, and for example, it's really, I remember there's one of the questions I'm seeing here. Um, how long, for example, in terms of braces, would one need to stay them with them for? Or does it depend with the issue and the structure of, of the dental? It, it really depends on the, the how severe the crowding is. But generally in adults, we take about 18 months to mm -hmm. 24 months. And in children, uh, we do probably 18 months. 
Uh, remember, nowadays we have braces uh, that can be placed inside your mouth. Those are hidden braces. Mm -hmm. So those would take a bit longer. Sometimes uh, we do have something we call clear liners. Uh, it's, it's all over the internet, something called, we call Invisalign. Those also, uh, they are clear braces that move your teeth and people also don't notice. Those tend to take a bit longer. But in general, 18 to 24 months. Again, after you've, you've completed your braces treatment, you do have something that we call a retainer. That tends to keep your teeth in that position that they have moved to avoid recurrence for the teeth to go back to where they were. So that is also an additional step. Sometimes you wear the retainer for a short period, other times it's for life. Again, depending on the amount of crowding. So why you say the clearer ones take longer? Why is it they yeah. take longer too? The, the conventional braces, the ones with wires, what people call trail tracks, mm. they are very predictable. The outcome is predictable. And with the wire, they move faster and, and you know how long it will take. So those with take 12 months? Between 18, 18 months. But again, depending on the crowd. Okay. Um, but the clear braces, they are removable. It also depends on the patient's compliance. So if, if you have a patient, because you change them every two weeks, if you have a patient who is uh, really compliant, then it takes much shorter. But again, we are all human beings. Sometimes you forget, you know, and, and then uh, the treatment tends to take longer. But it's, it's always timed. Okay. Yeah. We'll also talk about the myths around all of these dental issues. Uh, but we have a call from Paul, uh, who's calling us from Mombasa. Paul, thank you for calling. Good morning. Morning to you, my dear. Um, yes, please go ahead with your question or comment. Let's have okay, more volume. Okay, my question is, uh, mm -hmm. I just want to know that there is a permanent solution to my gum disease pollution. That is, when I try to crash during morning or evening, I experience a gum disease. That is, when I chew like sugar cake, I can, I can put some sort of blood. So you spit blood every time you uh, brush your teeth, is that what you're saying? And could you reduce the volume of your television so that we don't have that uh, frequency interruption? Hello? Yes, no. Well, okay, maybe it's still on. Hello? You're saying you spit blood every time you brush your teeth? Yeah, when I spend to brush during the morning or evening. Mm. Yeah, I can put some blood spot when, for example, I like chew sugar cane or a system. Okay. Yeah. All right, Paul, uh, we'll get your questions to the doctors. Uh, we also have another caller online. Yeah. Mary from Rongai, good morning. Good morning. How are you? Excellent. Thank you for calling. What, what question or comment do you have? My question is uh, regarding my second old daughter. Uh, um, after the milk teeth, uh, they remove the milk teeth. You know, the, 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 the normal teeth that are coming out, they're coming out with uh, erosion, the enamel erosion. Okay. What, uh, and uh, also she has been using the, the, the she hasn't been using the normal content that the adults use. And uh, we normally take rain water because they have a tank at home. Mm. Yes, now I use rain water for cooking, for, for drinking. Uh, so, I don't know. All right, but so uh, enamel yeah. erosion, and you yeah. usually have rain water? I use rain water. Okay. So, the Tarungai area is, uh, has a lot of salty water. Okay, thank you, Mary. We'll also have your question put to our doctors. Which one do you want to go with? Say, Paul is asking about the blood, I think, when he brushes his teeth. Okay, uh, to answer Paul, bleeding, bleeding gums, when you brush and uh, you find that you, you experience you're spitting with blood, that's usually a good sign of gum disease. Yeah, and uh, it's a sign of early early stages of gum disease, which is mm. called gingivitis, where you experience bleeding gums, you experience maybe bad breath, and um, sensitivity can mm. happen. Um, what I'd advise Paul, first of all, is to have um, good, uh, maintain a very good oral hygiene, brush well, and when we mean, when we talk about brushing, it, 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 it actually involves about doing a proper job, yeah, and um, 
taking your time, like um, five minutes, make sure, uh, like if you're brushing, you start with the, I usually advise my patients, just don't, don't do it, yeah? Just don't, don't take your brush and take it round, yeah? Mm -hmm. You can start maybe with the lower jaw, brush the outside, then go to the inside, brush from one, well, from one end to the other, then you brush on the occlusal services, then go to the upper jaw, the same thing on the outside, the inside and the parts you're chewing with. After that, floss your teeth, and maybe as Dr. Harry said, you can use a good uh, mouthwash. And, but I'll also advise him, it's good to have a dental checkup, yeah? Because from, as I had said earlier, when you have uh, deposits of tartar, it's hard to remove them with a brush. So that is where we do the scaling and polishing, okay. and uh, with all that, and maybe, but only in severe cases, you can have uh, maybe antibiotics uh, right. prescribed. Yeah. yeah, our time is up, so mm -hmm. doctor, I'll come to you finally for Mary's question. Uh, NML erosion, she talks about it and taking rainwater. It's, I, I, I think it's uh, what we touched on earlier, okay. the issue of fluorosis. And I think she, I heard she comes from Rongai. Mm -hmm. That is one of the areas where this, this uh, condition is endemic because of that salty water that she's talking about. I don't know how much rainwater she has collected, mm -hmm. but I'm sure she supplements with some form of water from around the region. Fluorosis is a very difficult uh, issue to uh, uh, manage because we're talking about drinking water, brushing water, cooking water, and then again, from that region, I'm sure people buy the vegetables, fruits okay. and vegetables from that yeah. area, and also get cow's milk. Those vegetables have been planted with the same salty water and the cows so have everything the has all of this yes, water so there needs to be a the prevention aspect is the best way to deal with fluorosis make sure that you use other sources of water that are not salty maybe bottled water so that you can prevent that issue the teeth that are developing develop from birth mm. to about uh, six to nine years of age now that is the exposure period for a, for a child after that Whatever water you drink does yeah. not affect your teeth as an adult. It's basically when the child is growing up. All so right. that is the basic period which most parents need to watch out for. Need to watch out yeah. for. And if you have any more questions, we must, have, we must go, we must wind up the show. But do see a dentist uh, for that, uh, Dr. Wanjiro Mukiri, Dr. Linus Ndagwa. Thank you so much for joining us uh, here on our health segment, Oral Health. And that just to remind you how important uh, this is. And when you do get some time, make that time actually uh, to be able to visit the dentist. That's where we wrap up the show. Thank you very much for staying with us. Um, we wanted to remind you, I don't know if you have time now, director says to leave. Um.